Thank you so much for giving us a platform uh, to share about our experience in Selangor uh, dealing with the freedom of information. Now, um, last term, I was part of the select committee. Uh, we formed a special, we, we formed a select committee just to examine the freedom of information bill before it became law in Selangor. So we adjourned it during the second sitting and we then had various consultation uh, sessions with various stakeholders uh, before we before we pass this uh, uh, bill in the Selangor State Assembly. Now, <clears throat> that committee was chaired by YB Sari Sungip, the Assemblyman for Hulu Klang. And I remember when we were debating this bill in the State Assembly, Barisan National Assemblyman, they all stood up, they were against this bill because they say it's unconstitutional because at the federal level you have the Official Secret Act and you cannot have any state laws that contradict federal laws. So on that basis they say they are not going to participate, it's unconstitutional. So when we had our uh, stakeholders meeting, I remember two reps from Bar Council came, it was Lim Chi Wee and Andrew Koo. And both of them gave this advice to the committee, they say this is a very noble thing Let's just push the boundaries. Even though they say it's unconstitutional, let's just push them to the maximum and then wait for them to take us to court. And so we thought, okay, good idea. Let's just pass this law. So we passed this with two very interesting provisions. This enactment has exception. Okay, so section 14 deals with exemption, uh, information that is exempted from being disclosed. Section 15 then deals with exception to exemptions. Okay? So you really have to play around with words and um, you have to learn to be smart in, in how you apply for this information. Now, this law has been passed four years ago, uh, but it only came into uh, practice uh, or it came into effect in 2012 after the drafting of the rules. Um, and since then, uh, Penang is the second state to follow Selangor. Penang also passed a similar enactment. Now, early this year, we uh, read a lot about uh, the criticism against the Selangor state government in not disclosing information. Um, and the CELCAT committee chaired by me uh, decided, okay, let's just do a public hearing and let's just examine the effectiveness of, uh, of this enactment. So we did a public hearing 27 January. It was uh, covered by a lot of media. We summoned um, the EXCO member. We summoned the information officers and also the state secretary to this public hearing. So it was disclosed to us during the public hearing that in, across the state now, we have 41 information officers. Okay? Each of them received 500 ringgit allowance, monthly allowance. Since 2013, yeah, we only have 163 applications. That's very, very little. Okay, 163 applications and only five were rejected. During this hearing also, we discovered that MPAJ, Mazlis Pabandaran Ampang Jaya, received the highest number of applications and also the Kuala Langat Land Office. Uh, what we also did, uh, I have a research unit. My research officers also uh, call up all these agencies uh, just to check, to inquire uh, anonymously to find out whether or not these, uh, these receptionists know about information officers. Do they know how to channel these queries uh, to the right person? And we discovered it was very, very weak. A lot of the receptionists don't know okay, about this freedom of information enactment. Now, even though we have 163 applications, five rejected. These five rejections were dealing with very high profile applications. Okay? And that's why we received that criticism that you're not sincere in giving out information. One of the most uh, highly criticized applications, uh, which was uh, not rejected, but there was just no reply from the state government, this was the application re rela in relation to the Dash Highway. Okay? So when you apply, time starts to run, you have 30 days to respond. Mm. But when you transfer from one department to another department, because you don't have that information, it takes another 30 days. Time starts to run again from the date of transfer. So this application went to the State Secretary's office, and then they then transfer it to the MB's office. 
So at the point of hearing, I'm not sure about it now, but at the point of hearing, there was still no answer coming from the MB's office. The second application was the water agreement, memorandum of uh, the, the water agreement. So when they applied, um, we also have uh, a provision in the Freedom of Information Amendment that says you require third-party consent. So the state government said, okay, we can disclose, but we need to get the party's consent. They wrote to the federal government. Federal government refused to give consent mm. because they were a party to this con agreement. So failed. The third one was the KEDEX Highway application. KEDEX Highway application, uh, the state government released information and they only gave the state exco minutes. So the applicant felt this was not enough. They wanted more. So I think, uh, I don't know the status now whether or not they appeal to the State Information Board, but these three were the highly criticised applications um, against the Selangor State Government. Now, some operational problems that we discovered, the weaknesses, and we have put in our recommendations, we discovered that since the passing of the law, there was no exco, no State Minister put in charge of this portfolio to make sure that there is smooth in, uh, execution mm -hmm. of this bill. They left it, Tan Sri Kalik then, left it in the hands of the State Secretary. You cannot leave such a controversial bill, uh, an act, you know, uh, in the hands of civil servants because civil servants have been trained all this while to operate using the Official Secret Act. You cannot pass it to civil servants to implement. So there was no ex in charge. And then, Every agency, they will appoint an information officer. These information officers are civil servants. They are transferred from one department to another department, resulting in new information officers being appointed. Right? So every time you have a change of information officers, you have to wait for them to be gazetted as information officers, and then you have to do training all over again. So we think that moving forward, you might want to consider contractual appointments so that this person is not transferred uh, after, given, after being given all this training. Now, the third thing we discovered was um, there was no good uh, timekeeper. When they just pass from one department to another department, time runs, you know, 30, 30 days is one month, you know. For an application, you can sit for two to three months and by the time you get the information, maybe it's already irrelevant. So there's no proper timekeeper. Um, and also lack of training. Since the passing of the law, there was only three trainings done. Okay, total money they spent on training four thousand three hundred ringgit and sixty-two cents. Eh, no, four thousand three hundred sixty-two ringgit. Four thousand ringgit. Any open house, uh, you spend more money than that. <laughs> or makan makan. Four thousand for training. So insufficient training. Uh, the other thing was um, the lack of awareness. A lot of people didn't know about this act. Uh, so when we went through the applications, we realized that it was lawyers, uh, event management companies that utilized this act. Okay, so there was also an abuse, I think. Lawyers wanting to get land information, they apply using FOI. Uh, you have um, event management company applying to local council saying, can you please give me a list of uh, businesses dealing with this program so that they can sell their materials to them. Okay, so that's abuse. So they have spent just paying allowance uh, to these 41 officers 246,000 ringgit. There's, a, there's an application fee involved for every application, nominal fee. And they collected a total of 2,000 ringgit, 2,223 ringgit. Now, Jahaba mentioned about how you should not be paying for information. Unfortunately, it's actually in the rules. You have to pay nominal fee, 2 ringgit, 10 ringgit. Yeah? But to me, this is not important how much we receive and how much we spend because I think it's the duty of the government to release information to people. Mm -hmm. So CellCat has made recommendations. We have tabled this report last sitting in March. We are now awaiting the government's response because we have amended our standing orders to say government must give official response to the House. Uh, in the coming sitting in August, the government must respond to our recommendations. Mm. One of our recommendations, we say you must put an executive councillor in charge of this portfolio. So there must be an ex-co member made responsible to push for this uh, implementation. 
Okay. The second thing was uh, training. You definitely must get overseas training because nobody is an expert here in Malaysia. Every state, they are still governed by official secret acts, so you cannot leave it in the hands of civil servants to train them. Um, permanent appointment or contractual appointment of information officers. Now, the most important recommendation we think is this. We say the state of Selangor must consider every single contract or agreement you're going to sign with any person now, you must have this automatic disclosure of information in your contract. So if you want to sign a water agreement with the federal government, before you sign it, you must make sure in the agreement, automatic disclosure. So there's no more breach of confidentiality issue. Okay, so you want to do business with the state, this is the rules that you have to play by. Mm. So that's our recommendation. We hope that they will respond positively. Uh, the last one was also um, a, a requirement under the Act. They must table a report on FOI enactment to the House uh, every year. But since the passing from 2011 until now, no report has been tabled to the State Assembly. So we told the State Secretary we want to see this done. Moving forward, I think um, we are beginning to see some teething problems regarding this act. And this is the most recent one, we, which we have not spoken about yet to anyone, um, is this. Every assembly person, they can submit, for every state sitting, they can submit 10 oral questions and 10 written questions. So in the past, assembly person will use these questions to ask, uh, will use this opportunity to ask for questions relating to contract price or whatever they want to know. So under Tan Sri Khalid's administration, there were questions relating to the salary and bonuses paid to GLC directors. Okay? Towards the end of Tan Sri Khalid's administration, when I was speaker, um, there was already a shift. We, we, we noticed a shift. They, these answers were not given to state assembly person. So during Tan Sri Khalid's administration, I remember one question asked by an assembly person. They received this answer. They say, if you want to know, you put in an FOI application to a state assembly person. Mm. By right, this is their duty mm. to ask and they can get that information. Mm. So the answer given, official answer, apply using FOI. Okay? Azmin Ali's administration now, still not getting the answer. This latest answer came back last week. I received a copy of this letter. The Kampung Tunku uh, Assemblyman Lao Wing San asked for a list of GLC directors, their bonus, their salaries. And this was the official response given by the State Secretary in writing to him. He said, um, number one, you asked for GLC's uh, information. GLC's are governed by this code of corporate governance and uh, it's unethical, it's against this code of corporate governance for them to release this information. Secondly, they cited the data, Personal Data Protection Act and say it will be in breach of this act if you, we cannot disclose. Okay? And then they also cited that these are uh, information which are exempted under FOI. Yeah, if you look at the exemption, we study the exemption, none of this fell under this category except for, of course, you know, third-party information. Uh, in my opinion, if you are going to work for a GLC, GLC receives state grants, re GLC receives state resources, you should not re be able to rely on any of this exemption because you are dealing with taxpayers' money. Mm. Now, I think the only reason why such information is not freely given and they use such excuses you know, executive will then pass it to state legal advisor. State legal advisor will find all this leeway. State secretary then respond and say, you know, cannot, cannot be given. The only reason why this cannot be given is because I think GLC directors receive a lot of money. If the, if the salary is 2,000 ringgit, I think nobody will take the time to study the law and come up with all these exemptions. And that's why I think we should continue to pursue this. Okay, so moving forward, I think it would be very helpful if Bar Council can come up with a thorough research on Official Secret Act, the exemptions, Freedom of Information Enactment, the exemptions, exception to these exemptions, and then also ta Data Protection Act, and then co company laws and all the, all the related laws. Okay, now, uh, second one, moving forward also, I think, uh, to avoid abuse of all these 
an event management company coming to us for information uh, and having, you, you know, in Kuala Langat we discovered the reason why they have such a high number of applications because last time when people inquire info at the information counter, information was given free. Now when you walk to the information counter, they actually tell you, fill up an application. So those questions at the information counter are translated into FOI applications. Okay? So moving forward, I think really FOI at the state level because of Official Secret Act, um, I think we should limit the FOI applications really to just cabinet documents, uh, which means state executive councillors' papers. Uh, their records of decisions and deliberations, uh, their any other documents that help them make such a decision because this is public interest if it goes to the exco. I think if we limit it to such detail, if we focus in on such applications, it can uh, really help it help us to execute it smoothly and then we will not be bogged down with all this unnecessary criticism. Now, during our public hearing, we did not discover this, but while preparing for today's session, I discovered this in one of the forms, the application forms uh, when you apply. If it's concerning third-party information, there is this part C in the form. You have to submit the applicant. So if I want to apply, I want to get information on State Secretary's uh, allowance uh, in this GLC, I have to submit a statutory declaration of this State Secretary consenting to me having access to his personal information. Which individual will give you a statutory declaration for you to have access to my salary? So it's really not going to work. You know, but these are rules. These are rules uh, made. This, uh, this is not in the Act. The rules are drafted by the State Legal Advisor, <laughs> approved by the Exco. Mm. Okay, so we have a lot of teething problems. We have to tighten. Um, let me just end by saying, um, it political courage, right, is measured not in you passing or revoking a law. Political courage is measured by how you execute this. Uh, whether or not when it comes down to important applications you will actually release information or not. So I think the Selangor State Government um, in all other applications, minor applications, I think they did fairly well. All these other information at local councils were given to these applicants. But the big applications like KEDEX, MOU, Water MOU, Dash Highway, I think people did not receive the doc information that they needed. So in that expect, I think we have failed. Uh, and I think it's not the end. Uh, CellCat has taken this up. So now we await direct uh, official response by the government in August sitting. And then maybe we will then form another select committee to see how we can improve and to amend uh, the enactment to make it more um, workable in Selangor. So with that, thank you so much.